Hi guys! Hi. So I'm going to give a few moments like I always do for people to come and join us before we officially get started. So right off the bat, I'm sure you guys can see that today is just a little bit different than how we normally do things here at Hot Start Home. A little bit. Just a little bit. So I'm going to give you more details about all of this as people are joining us. Hi Joy! Welcome, welcome. <laughs> So if you've already here, just know that we're giving a few more moments for everybody to join us before we get into it. Hi guys. Hi. Welcome, welcome guys. So good to have you again. Today is a beautiful day. I hope everybody has had a chance to get some fresh air. Yes. Okay, so right off the bat, Today is a bit different than how we normally do things. Uh, and I see people are coming right on in, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So welcome to Hexer at Home, the kids edition. I am your usual host, Lisa, but I have a very, very special guest here with me today. Everyone, please welcome Alyssa Matthews. Hi everybody, so normally I am behind the scenes, so I am so excited to actually be in front of the camera for this one. And I am very happy to have you here. So Alyssa is one of my coworkers, and she's also a fellow educator at the Hector Museum. So between the two of us, we teach all of the students and people who come to the museum. So I thought this would be a wonderful opportunity to have her come on with me and do something extra special. Amazing. So check out, hello, hello. Hi to everyone who's just joining us. Hi Maggie, hi Carrie, welcome everyone. So again, this is Lisa, I'm Lisa, and we will be your host today for Hector at Home, the Kids Edition. So if you're new or if you're here every week, I'd like to just give a quick explanation about what Kids Edition is all about. So what we do here is Alyssa and I will be showing you guys a work of art either from the museum's collection or something that's currently on view online at our website right now. Uh, so we picked this one out together. So I'm super, super happy and very excited to show you guys what we have in store. So we'll make some observations together, we'll look at the details, and then we'll get really inspired and see what kind of art project we'll be making today. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So you guys know this is a very familiar object here. Handy dandy in fact. Yes, my handy dandy iPad. And you will know that I do like to do a little bit of a countdown before I show you guys and unveil today's work of art. So Alyssa, yes. you could help me do the honors of counting down today. Ooh, it's a three, two, two one. Ta-da! So I'm going to bring this up nice and close so you guys will be able to see. And please let me know if anybody has any kind of issues. Let's bring it back a little bit. Okay. Oh, thank you guys for giving Alyssa such a warm welcome. So I'm going to give you guys a few moments to just look at this, um, take it in, look at it, have all the different details that are coming together to make this up. So this is actually a painting, and it's done by Cuban artist Emilio Sanchez. And the title of it is La Casa Vivienda. So, Alyssa, do you mind telling everybody what the title translates to? It roughly translates to The House. Fantastic. So this is called The House. And looking at it between the title as our clue and using our visual clues, what kind of painting did Emilio create? What is the focus here? What do you guys see? Okay, very good guys. So we're looking at a really big house actually. We can see there are a lot of ton of different rooms going on here. So I want you guys to tell me some different uh, aspects of this house that really stand out to you or catch your attention. What do you guys notice about this house? So maybe some details that you wouldn't normally notice that catch your eye here, let me know. Uh, so as we're looking at this here, I want you guys to know that Emilio is actually a huge fan and took a really big interest in architecture, or in other words, buildings. And you can definitely see that here in the house that he has created. But when we're looking at this house, what would you say is the main focus? Probably the house itself. So Alyssa, 
when you're looking at this here, mm -hmm. uh, can you see any other details other than the house? Like maybe who lives here? Uh, no. There's nobody at the door, mm -hmm. and all of the windows seem to be covered. Okay, so I'm really happy you mentioned that it looks like the windows are covered. So if you guys notice here, you will see that we have all these white, what looks to be like flaps, or we could call awnings, that are on top of the window. Uh, so because of that, it's very hard to see inside of the house, and it really makes you curious, and it adds some uh, mystery to it, if you will, and it makes you wonder, well, what's inside, or who's inside, where is this? And so when we're thinking about how the artist has arranged his artwork, or anybody, any artist has arranged their work, we're talking about an artwork's composition. So how the artist has decided how to lay out his artwork and what goes where. So I think he's done a pretty interesting job, and like we were just talking about, it really makes you curious about what else is going on behind the scenes of this house. So some other details that we can notice maybe is Alyssa was mentioning our windows before and how many there are. So if you guys notice, uh, we have a door, we have lots of windows, a roof, four walls, which Alyssa, what would you say are pretty normal things that every house has, right? Pretty standard. Pretty standard. So, do you guys have this many windows in your house? How many windows or doors do you have? I know my house definitely does not have that many windows. What about you, Alyssa? I'm a little lost for that many windows. A little lost for that many windows. But, what I will say is that this house is very symmetrical. Now, we've definitely talked about symmetry on Hex at Home before, but I'm actually going to ask Alyssa if she could tell us a little bit about what symmetry is. Okay, sure. So a really good example of talking about symmetry is when you think of a butterfly. So if you were to look at a butterfly and you were to draw a line directly down the center, uh, would the butterfly look the same on either side? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So that's a perfect example of something that would have symmetrical. And Emilio's painting is another really great example. Drawing a line directly down the center and you see the same exact thing on both sides. Very good. So we have the same amount of windows, the same amount of railings on either side of that front door right over here. And... Oh, Maggie says that she sees the curtains blowing in the wind. Very good. So again, we're referring to those white um, shapes that are on top of the windows. That's a really great detail to notice, Maggie. Thank you so much for sharing. Very, very good. So what I thought would be awesome is if we could use Emilio Sanchez's uh, painting as our inspiration for today's work of art. Uh, and I thought it'd be really fun if we could act like architects today mm. and create our own houses. So, as you guys know, normally I make the works of art or the projects for each week. Amazing job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, but today, because I have Alyssa here as my special guest, we did pick this work of art to talk to you guys about together today. And she was so excited and was really inspired by what we chose that she actually took uh, the initiative and created this week's project. So I'm gonna let her have the honors of showing you guys what she made. Okay, wait, wait, C can I get a countdown? Oh, of course, we cannot go without a countdown. Oh, I would saying. love one, I'm just saying. Okay, so if you guys could count down with us to see Alyssa's work of art in a three, three two, two, one. Ta-da! Okay, so this is what I created using Emilio Sanchez's painting as my inspiration. Uh, so right off the bat, what do you notice are some differences, actually, between my work and Emilio's work? What do you think, Lee? Well, for me, if for a second, if we actually show them uh, Emilio's work again. Mm -hmm. So this was the original one that we were talking about, La Casa de Vivienda. And again, if we can look at Alyssa's. Mm -hmm. And if you ask me, I think the biggest difference would definitely be the amount of windows. I would 
definitely a dream. Mm -hmm. There's so many windows in, yeah. in his big fancy house, and mine is a little bit more modest. Mm -hmm. And what do you guys think are some similarities that I had between my house and the Mariano's? Oh yeah, there is a welcome mat. Nice noticing that detail. Sometimes it's the smallest things that make the biggest impact. Yeah, you, you gotta give them a welcoming feeling. Mm -hmm. in here. Well, oh, yes, what do you think of some similarities? So for me, I think the biggest similarity is that we mentioned a lot about those awnings or the things that were covering the windows. And I noticed that your closet has it as well. Very good. And Carrie agrees with me. She said the exact same thing. So, very good. Now, there's actually a story behind this house. I love me a good story. Yeah, so I based it off of my own house, but there's a little something going on beneath the flaps of the windows. So, my idea was that this house is like millions of years old, mm. okay? So, really, really great carpentry, you know? <laughs> Can't find it anymore. And it's just been around for millions and millions of years. So I wanted to actually take a step back in time and show how each window could be a different period in time that the house has been around. So, Lisa, would you like to check yes. out what is beneath some of the flats? So, this is a magical house, and I live for that kind of creativity and imaginativeness. So, I think the first one that I'm going to choose is this one over here. So, why don't we bring it nice okay. up and close so people can see. Go. So, the first flap is... Ta-da! Oh my god, that is so fun. All right. Are you guys able to tell what time period this is? Was? Let's see what the comments have to say. Okay. Oh, nice. Maggie also said that yours is symmetrical. Definitely would oh, agree with that. Very good. very good. What time period does this look like to you guys? So if you ask me, mm. I would confidently say that this is medieval times. And the reason why I say this is because of the attire that this guy is wearing. Uh, and I would almost call him a knight in shining armor. That you know? was my goal. You got it. Very good. All right. All right. We're gonna we're gonna go to my next flap. Okay. Oh, I guess it's cheese again, you guys. Bet. I feel very lucky here. Choose your adventure. Hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and select the one on the other side. Okay. Can we go ahead and bring that nice up and close. Three, two, one. Woo. Okay. Oh, that's so colorful and fun. I love that. So guys, we see a ton of music notes. Yeah, so we d I definitely wanted to show that there is a party going on mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And it's really super colorful. Mm -hmm. And Lisa, are you able to tell what's up at the top? I think that's supposed to be a uh, disco ball, no? It really is. And I also found out that they are quite difficult to draw. Yeah, <laughs> I could have imagined. But I did my best. I think it came out really successfully, actually. Thank you. You know, here at Kids Edition, we're all about trying something new, and uh, sometimes it works out, and sometimes it doesn't, but in your case, it really, really did. I definitely learned a lot doing it. Mm -hmm. I just said disco! I see you are a fan of the disco. And so, I think that's normally associated with the 80s, right? The peak of the disco It period? was like late 70s, early 80s. Aha, very nice. Okay, so I feel like now, uh, we can go to the middle flap. We gotta go middle. Ta da! Ooh, I was not kidding. So my my house is millions of years old, and we have my dino friend here. Do you guys think that he looks like a mean dinosaur? Oh no! With those big old eyes, he looks like a gentle giant. He is, and he's got little <laughs> teeny tiny hands too. That reminds me of a T Rex. His name is Trex. Trex. I love that. Does he like check? He does. I love it. And maybe even uh, he likes to eat leaves because of all of the leaves you include at the top. He does. A herbal he, Like you said, gentle giant. Gentle giant. We love it. Okay, so moving down to the first floor of the house. First floor. So I'm going to go ahead and let's check out this one right here. Okay. And boop. Oh, <laughs> that is adorable. So guys, what do we have under this flap here? Who is our friend that we've uncovered? 
Yeah, Maggie said dinosaur. Very good. His name is Trex, if you didn't hear. So now we have another friend, and it is a really cute dog. Do any of you guys have pets at home? Alyssa, do you have, how many dogs do you have? Okay, so I based this off of my house, and like I said, I made everything a different time period, but this is supposed to be my current house, like right now, present day. So this is actually one of my dogs. And so cute. we have, um, I have three of them, mm -hmm. but only one of them likes to hang out in the window. <laughs> so this is my bud right here. All right, we only got one more flap to go. Very good. All right, last one. You ready? Mm -hmm. And oh my god. And here we go. Is that an alien? It is. So <laughs> cute. Okay. So, this is Frankie. Now, Frankie actually has the ability to travel through time. Whoa. So he could really visit any of these houses that are in here. That's awesome. But this is Frankie when he first moved in. Mm. Yeah. He, he had his mustache and, uh, <laughs> and he felt really good about it. All right. So I think now would probably be a good time to discuss how you can go about making your own house. So while I wanted to do a time traveling house, mm -hmm. um, really it's just about coming up with any story. It can just be your house with a different family member in each one. Mm -hmm. It can be a house full of your favorite cartoon characters. Ooh, I like the sound of that one. I know, really, really fun. But the most fun part about it is really coming up with the story behind mm -hmm. the house. And that is how you're gonna make it your own. Okay. So Melissa, question. Yeah. So we can get started, what materials will people need at home to create this? Easy stuff. Mm -hmm. You like that? I love easy. All right. So all you are going to need is a piece of paper, mm -hmm. a second piece of paper, <laughs> okay. two pieces of paper, a ruler, okay. a pencil, mm -hmm. and a glue stick, mm -hmm. and last but not least, a pair of scissors with parental supervision. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Oh, and uh, something to color with, perhaps? That's actually <laughs> a fantastic point, Lisa. You definitely are going to want to add as much color and life into this as you can. I use actually three different kinds of color wow. materials in here. Diverse. I use colored pencil, I use crayon, I use marker to outline. So really, whatever is your preference or any mixture of them is up to you. Okay, so to start, you're just going to be doing the shape of your house, mm. okay? You can pick a rectangle or any other shape that you want. You'll add a roof and a door, mm -hmm. and then you're going to want to draw squares for your windows. Mm. Uh, but you know how Emilio's piece had so many windows, right? Yeah, so many windows. We originally, I was going to do eight windows, but that seemed like a very overwhelming number. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to step back and I thought five sounded really comfortable for me. So just draw the amount of windows that you guys are comfortable doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm actually gonna show you how to do the flaps. Ah, behind. You know, I was curious about that, Alyssa, because yeah. when we're looking at Emilio's piece, it's a painting, right? So it's 2D Very good. or completely flat. But you kind of have actually a 3D aspect included to your project. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, because to me, it looked like the curtains were kind of like blowing in the wind and giving it like this three-dimensional feel. Uh, so I wanted to incorporate that actual 3D aspect into my work. Okay, so to do the flaps, I did a little trial and error, but once once I figured it out, it's very easy. Okay, so you're gonna start with on your piece of paper that has your house, after you've drawn it, colored it in, and you have your windows, you're gonna wanna outline your windows in a Sharpie or a marker, something that's a little darker, mm -hmm. okay? And then you're gonna take your second piece of paper and just put it right on top. And do you guys see that you can see right through that piece of paper in order to trace on top of it? Okay, so I'm just going to do that really, really quickly. 
Alright, so Ella's is going to go ahead and demo for you guys to show you exactly what it's going to look like step by step. Okay, so I just did one and I traced right on top of it. But if we look back at the original sample, if I were to just uh, outline the size of the window, I'd cut off this part over here. So I need to make it a little taller, okay? So that's when you're going to take your ruler and just measure a little higher above. Um, I like to do a half inch. I thought that was a good amount. So, I'm gonna do that. Hi, Tony, thanks for joining in. Oh, Maggie's had some great answers. Oh, so you have a cat? And I think Joy has a cat too, awesome. Very cool. All right, so once I have measured a half inch above, it looks like this. I know I didn't actually use my ruler to make the line straight, but here we are. We, freehanding works. I was freehanding for you. No problem. All right, and then we are going to take our scissors mm -hmm. and cut it out. You guys can tell Alyssa's a much better cutter than I am. You're a great cutter. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so once it's cut out like this, it's a good thing that we still have this line right here because it's gonna help us when we go to fold our flap, okay? So you're just gonna fold at this line right here. Okay, so I'm gonna bend it over. Okay, and now I have my my little crease right here. And I'm going to take my, stick. wow, <laughs> she is on it. All right, so I'm just gonna take my glue stick mm -hmm. and I'm going to glue that top bit right there. Fantastic. Okay, just right up at the top. And I'm going to place it right over, I can't even, you hold it. Here, here. I'll help you out. <laughs> Teamwork. All right, and you're just gonna place that right on top of the, of the rectangle that you already created. There you go. And then you've got your flap. Of course, you wanna wait for this to dry. Of course. Uh, so if we could give you guys a big tip when you're doing this, is that if you look at Alyssa's sample or the original one she created, You'll see that you can obviously include a color or any kind of pattern that you would like on top of the window flap, mm -hmm. uh, or you could leave it white just like Emilio did as well. But we would definitely suggest to do that um, before you cut it out, so it's already done and you don't have to worry about it. Right. So when you glue it, that's kind of the last step. And remember that extra half inch that Alyssa created uh, for the top of her flap is there so that you don't cover your beautiful artwork that you'll be making inside of your window. That was part of my error part. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. Okay, fabulous. Thank you so much for the demonstration, Alyssa. Honestly, so much fun. It looked like a ton of fun. I so loved being fun. able to find out what was underneath all of those. And I think it's really cool because, of course, we're being inspired by what Emilio Sanchez did, uh, but you really took it a step further because we were saying how when you were looking at what he created, it really made you curious and wanted to figure out the mystery behind what was inside that window. Right. And you kind of gave us the ability to find out for ourselves. Yeah. And I love being able to look through it step by step and discover everything on our own. So really, really awesome job. Okay. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, so, because this is Alyssa's first time creating a project, she's really excited to see what all of you guys create. Yes. So, if you do make uh, your own house with your own story, we would love to hear uh, what you've done and where your imagination takes you. So, please, please take a picture when you guys are finished, upload it to social media, and tag the Hector Museum so Alyssa, Alyssa and I can see all the fabulous work that you have created. Okay. <laughs> I do love a good blue stick. All right. So I have had an amazing time. Well, not only today and getting to participate, which is like my dream, but <laughs> I have been watching this series since the beginning. And it has been an absolute favorite of mine 
every single week. So one of my favorite ones that you did mm -hmm. was uh, Hello Kitty in a Gray Chair. I, and I love it because you don't only get to learn about the museum's permanent collection, mm -hmm. but we also get to learn about all these different techniques. Like we talked about shading, we talked about perspective, and I also learned that there is an alarming amount of Hello Kitty. <laughs> and I probably own way too many of them, but I definitely chose my favorite for that particular project. So I'm really happy to hear you enjoy this. It was so much fun. Awesome. And I hope all of you guys did as well. And if you don't know what episode Alyssa is referring to, you can always go back on our website and rewatch anything that you might have missed if you really like this. Uh, so I really enjoyed having Alyssa here as a special guest, and it felt so special to do this with her. Um, but I, because it was so great, I we actually decided that from here on out, we were going to be doing Hex at Home together. But because of this big change, we're also going to be having a title change. So we're now going to be known as, since summer is officially starting, this is now going to be Hexra at Home Summer Break Edition. So I'm super yeah. excited to now be doing this with Alyssa. Uh, and we're actually going to be starting this back up again on July 11th. Um, but July 11th is a Saturday. Yes. Okay. Good, good catch, Alyssa. So normally, like today, we see you guys Tuesdays at 3 p.m., but we'll actually now be seeing you July 11th, Saturdays at 10 a.m. So we really hope to see you guys there. And where can we check this out? Okay. Next great question. <laughs> so while we're here all on Facebook right now, when we restart for Summer Break Edition, you guys can catch us at the premiere on YouTube. Ah. So in the meantime, while you're waiting, please make sure that you're following us on Instagram, here on Facebook, and definitely subscribe to us on our YouTube channel, which is, which is called Texture Museum, and you'll get all of the updates as we're getting ready to come back to you as the summer break edition. I'm so excited mm -hmm. uh, to be doing this over the summer. We already have so many fun mm -hmm. ideas planned for you guys over the summer. And what we actually have a theme that mm -hmm. is going into the summer, and it is all about nature and the outdoors. So we're going to do our best to incorporate those two things into our artwork. Definitely. We're going to get outside and get super creative in a ton of different ways and get us outside and not be sitting at home all the time. Yes. Okay. So I hope you guys had so much fun with me and Alyssa. I know we had an absolute blast. And we'll see you guys again on July 11th. Bye. Bye, guys. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.